Alright guys, Hatchcraft back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. The bowling memes may have stopped for the time being, but Shotzi has revealed on stream that Rambo has been taking some insight into what's been happening over the past few days and is going to make some changes to his coaching style, potentially based on some feedback from Dashi, but also by what the rest of the team might have said after having a discussion behind the scenes. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Thanks to all the new subs yesterday as well. You guys have been killing it. First of all, some absolute madness to be honest on the London and Royal Raven side. This seems maybe inevitable in some degree because their team is terrible, has been terrible for quite some time. We thought it was going to be terrible at the start of the season, but I do not know what's going on in that camp. And yes, Minnesota Rocker aren't looking so good, but I'm happy that at least Afro is free. And um, I'm sure that some are saying, look, free is Sieve as well. So Scraps came in before the Major 2 qualifiers. This was a change that was like, oh, you know, here we go again. It's just Friendship League, baby, we're back in business. It's, you know, a Seam and Zero, and they're obviously their friend Scraps because they team with him back in Black Ops 4, they bring him in, it doesn't go so well, the reverse sweep against the Rocker was kind of a nail in the coffin it seemed for this team to have any sort of success and last night on stream, Zero confirms he's now been bent, I don't know what it is with the players confirming this rather than the team itself, we saw a few days ago Paul X confirms he was bent and Scraps was in and that's what was happening there and the team confirmed it like several days later, so I don't know what is going on in this camp to be honest, it's an absolute shambles but now Zero is benched and Paul X is going to be back and when we initially heard that Zero was benched last night, so I was like, okay, probably they're going to get Harry right, or they're going to get Gizmo right, a couple of these players they trialled last season that had good runs in the team, I thought, and I would have liked to see that, right, because Paul X coming back, I mean, is he really a main if Scraps is going to be the flex, like, man, I don't know, like, the fact that this is going on is a disaster, now, look, first of all, I know that I think Zero also went on to say that he would prefer to be running an SMG, Zero's always been a very versatile player, he's been good as an AR at times, certainly back in Infinite Warfare, the last couple of years, I think Black Ops 4, he was great as well. Pretty much running whatever role for the majority of that season. The last couple of years though hasn't been so good. Cold War he had visa issues. He couldn't even play for the London team that year but he got back in the team in of course Vanguard and was great right at the start and then you know since then hasn't been quite so good. So I mean look obviously Zero individually hasn't been quite the player that he was a few years ago. It's understandable that eventually he's going to get kicked out of the team. But just that they're kicking in for Paul X to come back alongside Scraps it's like you know come on <laughs> what is going on there. So that is the current update we have. Zero even goes on to say, you know, gone through so much stuff, even a Modern Warfare 2 Flash can't hurt me anymore. So, um, I mean, yeah, unfortunate really, but at the same time, it's like, what is going on in London, man? It's an absolute disaster. This team was bad at the start of the year. There were rumours that they were the worst team in the game by far. They came out swinging, in fairness, in the M4 meta at the start of the season. Looked surprisingly good. Asim, individually, has been one of the best players in the game. Let's, <laughs> you know, let's not put it bluntly. To perform as he is on a bad team is very impressive, but, um, yeah, like, I could surely they don't think this is going to work at this point. Surely Asim isn't looking at this change thinking, oh yeah, that's what's going to fix us, bringing Paul X back in for zero. It's like, okay, I don't know who's proposing this stuff, but um, anyway, that is what we believe is going on. Hasn't been confirmed yet, but zero says, yeah, he's going to now grind out challenges and try and get another spot back in. So uh, yeah, I don't know what the future is going to be with London, but it's not looking good lately over the past few weeks or so. Let's dive into some of this optic stuff. They thought this was kind of cool, actually. The most dominant trios in the CDL era, Hook Shots, Ely, Simba, BZ Cell, of course, one of these trios is far more dominant than the others, but it's still interesting to look at some of the numbers. And certainly on the first kind of evidence, right, of what Optic can do with this, with the Zio guys being back in business, was pretty impressive. I think Shots and Hook worked relatively well together. Illy seems a bit more comfortable playing with those guys as well. And Scum obviously is just going to fry on the AR. If their, um, if their Search and Destroy gets better, Optic are certainly a force to be reckoned with, but there's many other good teams, right? We've got the FaZe guys looking incredibly strong after their performance last week against Seattle Surge. We've got Toronto, we've got New York. I think they're pretty clear-cut top three teams in the game right now. There's some other teams underperforming, but um, there's still work to be done. Now, obviously, the last few days, there's been lots of talk about the Rambo stuff, the Dashy stuff, all the friction that was going on there behind the scenes. And Shotzi addresses a bit of it on stream last night. One of the things he mentioned was that I think Rambo's like, um, you know, it's been taking a toll of Rambo individually, right? Like all these memes, all this discussion about him has been making him, you know, kind of sad, I guess, to see some of this discussion. And I certainly feel for Rambo in that sense. It's a difficult one to me because I know that a lot of people are going to 
going to say, you know what? Well, look, Rambo is a coach of the biggest team in Call of Duty. If you are a Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, if you're even a Mattia Bonotto, uh, well, formerly at Scuderia Ferrari Formula One, if you're the manager of one of these big teams with a lot of fans and things don't go so well, then you're going to get roasted. You're going to get clowns. People are going to be talking about you left, right and centre. That's just how it is in every sport. Now, at the same time, I think that COD and esports is a little bit different at times. The community seems much more close-knit. You know, the pros are so close to the fans. They're on stream all the time. Rambo and, and these guys are actually talking on their own broadcast and the fans are so close to them. So, I don't know, like, COD feels like a different community than you get in those, like, massive sports where this kind of stuff is more prevalent. So, I can understand why, you know, I feel for Rambo a bit on this one. But at the same time, right, Opta came up with their podcast. They did their thing. Dash then came back with his stuff about the bowling memes and all this. So, you know, what's happened is kind of inevitable to a certain extent. And, uh, you know, okay, Rambo might not be so happy with it, but actually it might be kind of forcing him, pushing him in a direction to change his style to a certain extent. Now, what I found most interesting about this, so I'll share a couple of clips here, a couple from Shotzi, one from Clayster as well, and there's also Formal giving some thoughts additionally on Rambo. You know, we saw Formal the other day say that he's not so convinced about Rambo. Karma said the same thing. So it's not like it's going for the community or just Dashi on this. There's other members of the optical organization that don't believe that maybe he's going about things the best way. We know that Dashi said about leaving to go bowling, but even outside of that, the way he was coaching, the way he handled the veto situation, not really consulting them, just doing whatever with Team A, Team B, then coming back to the team telling them what they were doing. He even admitted to one mistake early in the season against Surge, I think it was Major 2, when he made a bit of a veto mistake and they were going to kind of correct that with the team going forwards, but apparently not something that really happened from Dashi's side of things, that he was still being this kind of like the government, right, or this like authoritative figure, this kind of tyrant. I don't, don't think Dashi used that word specifically, but that's kind of what he was implying. The way that Rambo handles that team, and it seems that the Optic guys themselves, as a core, as the guys that are currently on that team, they kind of get along with that style of coaching. Dashi certainly did not, and that's why the friction was there and why eventually the change was made, I suppose, in that sense. But clearly there were some things that the Optic guys that are still there weren't maybe 100% happy with, because apparently he's going to be making some changes to his style. You can't blame Brandon, though. That's the thing, though. Like, you can't, like, bro, there's players that could deal with it, and there's players that don't like it, dude. And, like, it's just as simple as that. And it's not, like, it's not an ego thing, bro. I mean, is it an ego thing? I don't really know if it's an ego thing, but, like, it makes sense, like, to say your coach is, like, you don't, you know what I'm saying? It, ma it makes sense. You can't tell me it doesn't. But Ray agrees, though. Like, we literally had a conversation, and he says that he does feel like he's more involved in, like, trying to, trying to get us on the same page. And he says that moving forward, like, <clears throat> he wants the players... He, like, moving forward, he's going to be the one asking questions instead of doing the talking. That's like, I'm just going to keep it short and simple. So. <laughs> I mean, Rambo going bowling is whatever because we let Jason go bowling too, but we also love Jason. <laughs> Jason's in a bowling league too, but Jason's such a good coach that we don't care. And we can also handle scrimming without a coach as well. I think Ray's got one too many hobbies though. He does bowl, he does like, Ray's good at like everything. He's good at like foosball, ping pong. We're playing good. Badminton. If I would, yeah, chess. Like, there's so much. Bro, you guys are so crazy, dude. Do you think Dashy is lying about the optic stuff? They need to fire Rambo. Bro, you guys are nuts. I think that with everything, anything in life, when there's two sides to a story, that the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And that what it probably was is that. There was resentment that had built up between p individuals. Neither was willing to budge and understand the perspective of the other person at a certain point. And once those relationships become damaged beyond repair, the other one feels incredibly wrong and then the other guy feels incredibly wronged as well because neither one actually considered each other's feelings and met in the middle anywhere. And it was very, you know, every COD pro has an ego, bro. I mean, we're top 50 players in the world. You have to have a level of an ego to be here. Anybody who's coaching a team has an ego. You're one of 12 coaches in one of the most competitive leagues in video games. Like, dude, everyone has an ego. And as soon as you get to a point where people are not comfortable with each other and you aren't able to talk about those things to each other and come to an understanding and a, and a compromise and be in the middle, then this is what happens. And so I think, like, they're both probably at fault, and I think that they both probably have valid reasons why they're upset at the other one.
and that's just the nature of anything in life, dude. So as Shotzi says there, right, he's going to be the one asking a few more questions now rather than kind of giving them the answers. He's going to be asking for their feedback. And I do wonder, like, okay, you can talk about the, what Dashi had to say on Rambo. To me, what's more interesting is the fact that Dashi obviously had these frictions with Rambo and Clayson described it very nicely, I thought, the way that, you know, the friction was there between the two of them. It wasn't going to get resolved. The resentment was building up and eventually something was going to blow up. And I can't share the entire context, unfortunately, of that Shotzi clip because the past broadcast is deleted. So all we have is those clips that I shared for you guys from that particular, well, when he was talking about the Rambo Dashi thing. But I believe that he said that the majority of the team, the team that's currently there, of course, pretty much the Dallas Empire core, they like the way that Rambo goes about things from, from a practice perspective. Obviously, we know that Dashi wasn't so happy about the VOD review and stuff like this, but it also seemed that from Dashi's perspective, and he said during when he was talking about the VOD review, when he was talking about the bowling thing, that he was saying to the team, like, guys, is this not, is this normal for him to just leave and go bowling? Whether that actually happens more than one occasion we don't really know but um or you know is it normal for us to just review the VOD looking only at the minimap right and the other guys would be like yeah it's just kind of what we do but you would think that if it was just a dashy problem with Rambo's style then after dashy's gone no problem right no need to make any changes because the rest of the team are happy with it but seemingly there are some things that maybe the team were like yeah you know what dashy might have had a point on that and uh, maybe we need to change things around and probably Rambo's sitting there like great give me some feedback right I want to improve as a coach if I'm doing this wrong if I'm being a bit too harsh here if I'm analyzing this the wrong way or discussing these situations in the wrong way, then sure, tell me and I'll get better and we'll therefore we'll get better as a team. And I think maybe kind of this is exposed a little bit what Dashi was implying. I mean, Dashi made the point that the guys on that team never really said anything. He was being the most vocal one. He was the one saying, "Is this, are we doing this the right way? Is this actually the right approach? And no one on the team was really saying, oh yeah, actually you make a good point there. Let's change things around. They were just kind of like, um, you know, submitting to whatever Rambo was doing on the daily. And maybe all this drama and, um, and the fact that even the likes of Puckett and others have come out on broadcast, I mean, on the CDL side and made some jokes to, to his expense right on the bowling side, it's kind of, um, you know, got to a point where probably the team internally has had a bit of a discussion and said, actually, yeah, you know what, let me take a slightly different approach to coaching, which might be a good conclusion for the optic side, right? But it's just a little bit strange to me that Dashi was making this seemingly rather good point that the team didn't really raise any of these concerns to Rambo about his style that obviously they disagree with parts of, but probably agree with the majority of what he does. Obviously, Dashi disagreed with the majority of what he did, but um, even this right, I don't think we got a specific clip of this, but where Optic Texas Banner was obviously listening to the stream, and apparently the players now pick what maps they want to play instead of Rambo, so probably Dashi was correct on his analysis, and indeed Rambo did go a bit overboard on some of the veto decisions, and now that all this has happened, Rambo's been like, okay, yeah, actually, if you guys want me to not do that, then we can, but maybe this didn't necessarily come from Rambo, but it also comes from the team not being so vocal about what they wanted until now, so very strange situation, but uh, you know, it does does vindicate part of what Dashi said here, not just on maybe Rambo not having the best coaching style, which is now going to improve based on what we've heard there from Shotzi, but also the fact that the team themselves, while they might agree with the majority of what Rambo does, and obviously has a great resume for his, you know, well, pedigree, let's say, as a coach in Call of Duty, but nonetheless, there are still changes they wanted him to make that maybe they weren't making known until now. So pretty crazy situation, to be honest, but it could be good for all parties, right? Rambo gets to kind of know that, all right, yeah, maybe it wasn't all going perfectly well well, then maybe the team wasn't always so happy with how he was conducting things. The team now maybe has a better relationship there themselves. And hopefully Dashi can go on to greener pastures as well and join an entirely new team dynamic. Because of course, he's been on Optic for a long period of time. And, um, you know, even Rambo and Roger here and having a bit of a back and forth about bowling a few months ago. And even Formal was like, uh, oh yeah, Rambo's got a bit few too many hobbies, right? I thought it was quite the statement there from Formal that was like, oh yeah, our coach, is it Lunchbox or whatever the guy's name is from the Halo side? That guy's quality. We don't mind if he goes bowling, right? And misses a few scrims because we can handle it but um you know we actually rate him and then he's like oh yeah rambo has got a few too many hobbies he, you know he's good at chess he's good at foosball he's good at golf and all this stuff which is true but um i mean yeah seems like formal believes that rambo cares more about the external stuff to cod rather than the stuff itself but i mean yeah classic further bit of drama from the boys but i thought an interesting update and probably a positive one for optic texas and for dashi's future as well so very much enjoyed to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you are new. Take care and I'll see you next time.